I am Joshua, a Joshua Anderson. I work with Sharon Glotzer at the University of Michigan. <coughs> and uh, I'm going to share to, with you today the work of a uh, student, Ryan Marson, who did some dissipative particle dynamic simulations of star polymer micro droplets. So this sort of uh, came as an, uh, uh, a project with a, uh, let me go back to my first slide. Um, so it's in collaboration with Peter Ma, who's actually in the dentistry department at the University of Michigan. And they're doing some really cool research with these um, star polymers. So first they make a, uh, a dendromer, and then they polymerize polylactic acid on that, and they get this, this star polymer coming out of a dendromer core. They emulsify it, and then they get these micron size droplets that's a double emulsion, and some of them have pores and some of them don't. And I don't understand the experiment completely, so they, they talk about using these for tissue regeneration in dentistry, and I, I can't answer how it works for that, but that's, that's what their motivation is. And they, they could make, make these pretty easily, and they could change the parameters, and they really came to us because they didn't understand um, what to change in the number of arms in the polymer or the length of the arms in order to get a targeted geometry of the, of the final droplet. So just to, to do this, um, in a little more detail, so they have um, polylactic acid on the stendermer. They put it in a um, uh, glycerol uh, solution, and it's uh, out comes buckets of these little micro droplets. And so, based on the parameters, they can end up with hollow cores that have solvent in the middle and on the outside in a double emulsion, or they can have just solid spheres this, with uh, solvent all on the outside. And the physics of this is really pretty simple. It's a standard immiscibility that you get a lot in polymer, uh, polymer systems. So <clears throat> to show in pictures what this is, you can change the uh, number of arms on the polymer, on the, on the star polymer, the length. And <clears throat> as you change these parameters, you can get all these, these different morphologies. So in general, the shorter arms make much smaller um, and much more porous structures, and the longer arms end up making more solid spherical structures. And the, uh, at, at the end of this polymerization reaction, there are some unre unreacted hydroxyls at the end. And these hydroxyls play a really important role in what, what the final structures are. So to look at some more pictures, um, as you change the, the length of the arm and the, uh, the number of arms in the polymer, you, you can get a wealth of, of different structures here. So we model this uh, at a very coarse grain level. Uh, the physics is pretty simple. It's just immiscibility. So the, uh, the DPD polymer model is, is natural to apply to this. So the polymer itself is glycerophobic. It wants to avoid uh, the solvent and stay, stay as far away from the solvent particles as possible. The, um, the hydroxyl groups on the end are glycerophilic, and so they want to be in contact with the solution. And so this is, you can see with this where changing the length of these arms, changing the number of arms, the number of arms is going to increase your hydro hydroxyl density. Changing the length of the arms is going to change the geometries that these polymers can adopt, whether or not they can actually reach their arms out across from an outside solution to the inside solution inside the droplet, or whether if they're long enough to just reach from the inside all the way out to the edge. So uh, as I said, we use just standard dissipated particle dynamics. So this is implemented in HUMD, which is a simulation code that um, I lead the development of. It's a GPU accelerated molecular dynamics and Monte Carlo simulation code. And it's driven by uh, Python scripting language. So coming up with models like this, you can just write Python code to generate these polymers. And then a few more lines of Python to implement, uh, to activate this force field, this DPD force field, which is built into HUMD and then uh, run your simulations. So some interesting tricks. Um, in order to optimize this DPD force field, which has random forces, if you're not familiar with it, at, at any time step, you're looking at pairs of particles, and you're actually applying random forces 
um, pseudo from generated from pseudo random number generators between the between those two particles. And on, on a GPU where you might be computing these two forces in parallel in different threads, this can be a challenge. And so the trick we use is to use a, a hash based random number generator. And so the random numbers come out of a hashing of the particle indices and the random number seed and the time step. Um, so with this trick, it's pretty easy to just put the same particle indices in both threads and generate the same random number twice to keep the conservative force. Um, so these are the, the specific geometries that we identified uh, to be useful to study in, in this, our simulation study. So we went all the way from uh, a linear polymer to a three arm, four arm, uh, all the way up to 64 arm. So this is a very large simulation. And we, this, this core where in the, in the actual experiment they have this more complex dendromer as part of the core to this. We are not uh, modeling that directly. We just have all these, all these star polymers come together and, um, into one point. So we, we tried to self-assemble these droplets just by putting polymers randomly in solution and self-assemble the droplet out of, uh, out of that. That's, um, and it would be more satisfying to be able to do that, to be sure that this is more of a free energy minimum. Uh, but we were unable to. Um, we're not sure if it's just due to equilibration time or um, if the system, <clears throat> there's not enough in the model to, to get that. So at the end, what we decided to do was to actually build these droplets by hand. And so you start with, um, the nice thing about DPD is particles overlap all the time. And so it's really easy to just place particles randomly where you want them. And so we would propose a configuration, say, okay, this arm polymer, this polymer with this number of arms and this length of arms will form a hollow droplet. And so we'll initialize solvent in the middle, initialize the polymer in the shell, and initialize solvent in the outside. Um, we're not showing the solvent because that occludes everything that you can see. Uh, the polymer bonds, uh, you can see here there's one polymer stretching its arms from the outside to the inside. Um, in many of the images I'll be showing, the polymer itself will just be an isosurface that's transparent so you can see in and see the structure. And the, those unreacted hydroxyls, which are the only thing that are, are solvophilic in the simulation, are, will be red beads. And so we'll start with a con this constructed droplet and uh, basically test for, for metastability. Uh, just run this simulation and see, does it decide to equilibrate and remain a droplet, or does the thing just quickly break apart? And it, uh, then our, our proposed structure was, was not stable. And with the DPT simulations, that goes pretty quickly. So using this method, we can find stable configurations of uh, pretty much many of the, of the morphologies that they see in the experiment. So we can find solid droplets, um, hollow droplets that have solvent in the middle and on the outside, and droplets with pores. So um, this, this trend of the same tre sort of trends they saw in the experiment, where as you go from a um, fixing the number of arms in the polymer, but just changing the length from a much longer length arm down to a shorter arm, we see a similar pattern that they saw in the experiment, where the longer arm polymers are able to stabilize a solid microdroplet. Slightly shorter gives a hollow microdroplet, and then even shorter gives a um, very not stable droplet with a very porous structure to it. Um, oh, I think these are movies. Let's see. Here we go. Yeah, so this is a, a simulation movie of we've, we've initialized this and run the simulation, and you can see how it remains stable over uh, a very long time period. And these, these two, this solid droplet is staying, staying very solid and all together, and this droplet is, is starting to fall apart and make this sort of porous network around the outside. I think, so here is a hollow droplet. 
So changing the, the arm length to get uh, a ho stable hollow droplet. And as we run the simulation, you can see the, the Brownian drift as this, these random forces add up to a non-zero non force and, and cause the particle to drift over, the whole thing to drift over time. But the, over a very long simulation time, the, uh, the droplet remains stable and uh, equilibrates very quickly. So the, the largest simulations with those 64 arms and the long, <coughs> the long, the long arms uh, required uh, 11 million particle simulations. So that's 11 min million particles counting all the polymers and all the solvent, which of much of the solvent's not shown. And so these, these are really large scale simulations for uh, a, a coarse grain molecular dynamics code. And uh, this is where we really need the power of blue waters to do this work. Um, because running these simulations required uh, 128 GPUs for, for many, many hours. And Blue Waters is one of the only machines where you can get jobs uh, this, with this large of a number of GPUs to, to run. So uh, the, the out, sort of the outcome of the simulation study was the, the importance of those unreacted hydroxyls in maintaining the, uh, setting up the, the structure that's formed. And so, the, this is the same polymer architecture. Let me go back and play that again if I remember how this goes. So the same polymer architecture now, um, in one case, it stabilizes into a non-hollow droplet. And then if we just artificially go in, um, as you can do in simulation, and increase the strength, uh, the emissibility of that hydroxyl, then it can actually stabilize a hollow droplet. And so this was uh, the confirmation to the experimentalists that the, the hydroxyl is the, really the important part controlling this. Um, and you can, as, as we've already gone through on, on some of the previous slides, now we can, we can match up and we can see that these um, morphologies that we get are, are very similar to the experiment, where you can have the solid droplets, the, the hollow droplets, and porous ones. So the, this is a, a really interesting self-assembly platform that's using these star polymers. Uh, it can get really rich structure. In, in our largest simulations on blue waters, there's, there's a hint inside here of some microstructure within inside the, the polymer. And uh, that's something we haven't, haven't taken the time to look into further yet, but it could be, could be some, some interesting results there. And uh, maybe, controlling different parameters, you could lead to more and interesting complex structures. So we're actually moving on from this project though. And uh, so our, our next project on Blue Waters, and which we're in the middle of right now, is to study complex crystals. So this is our, our, our next steps is to use, to use the same code, HMD, um, running on GPUs, running large simulations. This is a picture of a, an icosahedral quasi-crystal which is formed from a single type of particle and a single pair potential in MD. Okay, it's a completely unphysical pair potential. I'm not sure how anyone could experiment could make this double well potential. Um, but it's, it's motivated by some of the um, interactions that you see in metal systems. And just by tweaking parameters in this potential, we found uh, an icosahedral quasi-crystal quasi that came out of this. And we're really interested in studying how does this form? How can you go from such a simple building block to such a complex structure? When particles are falling onto the outside of a growing nucleus, how do they know where to go? You know, do they rearrange when they land on there or do they just go to right to the right place and, and as the, um, in this case, quasi-crystal, of course, we're going to look at many other complex crystals as well. How, does, how do they grow? Um, so that's where we're going next on Blue Waters. And <laughs>